This video is an introduction to network flow diagrams. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the plumbing inside of your house. The reason we're doing that is plumbing relates really well to network flow diagrams. Now the type of plumbing I'm looking at is called copper piping. And we have two types here, or two different sizes. The first pipe at the top is known as three quarter inch pipe. And the reason we call it that is because the width of the pipe is three quarters of an inch. The smaller pipe is known as half inch pipe. So this one has a width of half an inch. Now these pipes have what is known as a maximum flow rate. Now I did a little bit of research and I found that the larger pipe, the three quarter inch pipe, had a maximum flow rate of 89 liters per minute. Meaning that the maximum amount of water that can pass through this pipe is 89 liters per minute. Emphasis on that word maximum. So you can have less water or, or less of a flow rate going through this pipe. You just can't go beyond 89. The maximum flow rate for the half inch pipe was 53 liters per minute. Now I do want to point out that I just did a little bit of research on the internet. So these numbers could easily be wrong. I, I can't guarantee my sources and I don't want you to quote me on this. But for the sake of teaching you about network flow diagrams, we're going to refer to these maximum flow rates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a, a circle over here. And I want you to imagine that this is some sort of a pump. Okay, and let's say that the pump is pumping water at, um, at 70 litres per minute. All right. Now what would happen if this pump was pumping into our larger three quarter inch pipe? As soon as it hit the pipe, would it all of a sudden increase in speed and flow at 89 litres per minute? Well, the answer is no. Just because it has a maximum flow rate of 89, it, it doesn't mean that this bigger pipe increases the rate of flow. It, it just allows it to flow up to this point. So it's just going to carry on going at, at 70 litres per minute. So what if this pump is pumping at 70 litres per minute and hits the half inch pipe, which has a maximum flow rate less than 70? Well, what's going to happen is the flow rate is going to change. It's going to decrease. And because it started at 70 litres per minute, it's now going to go at 53 litres per minute. So it's going to carry on going at the maximum flow rate that the half inch pipe will allow. Now these flow rates can cause problems when connecting your pipes in a house. And I'll, I'll just show you a real simple example here. I want to remind you that our three quarter inch pipe on the left has a maximum flow rate of 89 liters per minute. So imagine that the water is flowing through this pipe at this maximum flow rate. Now what's gonna happen when you start connecting other pipes? Let's say you connect a, a half inch copper pipe to the three quarter inch pipe. Some of you have probably guessed that the half inch pipe is going to slow down the flow rate. It's going to slow it down to its maximum flow rate of 53 <coughs> liters per minute. All right, let's look at another scenario. Here we've got three quarter inch pipe connected to half inch pipe, and then back again to three quarter inch pipe. Now, we already mentioned that if it was coming down the pipe at 89 liters per minute and then hit the half inch pipe, it would slow down to 
53 litres per minute. So what's going to happen when it comes and hits the three quarter inch pipe? Is it going to speed up all of a sudden? Well, no, it's going to remain at 53 litres per minute. Once it's slowed down, the bigger pipes can't just make it speed up again. Now, we refer to this situation as a bottleneck. This smaller pipe becomes the bottleneck in our network of piping here. And the water can only flow as fast as the smallest pipe. So as soon as you install one of these smaller half-inch pipes, all of a sudden, the bigger three-quarter inch pipes have to flow at the same rate as this smaller pipe. Now what's really interesting is if you were to look inside the walls of your house, you would find that just about all the piping is this half-inch pipe. So it's the pipe with the smaller flow rate. Now I'm no plumber and I don't know why that is, but what I do know from observing my house is this bigger three-quarter inch pipe seems to be the pipe that they use coming from the from the street. So from the street, it, they use this bigger pipe towards your house, and then they use the half-inch pipe inside the walls of the house. And the question is, if the smaller pipe, which becomes your bottleneck, uh, slows down, the water to 53 litres per minute, then what's the point of having the larger pipe? And that's where we come to our next diagram, where essentially what they're trying to do is have this larger pipe coming from the street and then splitting it into two sections like so. So we're going to look at the diagram on the right. The diagram on the left, I actually did some plumbing incorrectly on purpose to show you the kind of mistakes that plumbers could possibly make. The one on the right's going to work correctly. So we already learned that the three quarter inch pipe flows at 89 liters per minute. Now when we hit the smaller half inch pipe, it reduces it to 53 liters per minute. The interesting thing we're noticing here is this little connector splits the water into two paths. And what we can do is we can take our 89 litres per minute, 89, and we can divide it into two, or divide it by two, which gives us 44.5 litres per minute. All right. Now, knowing that the half-inch pipe has a maximum flow rate of 53 litres, we can have something that's less than that. So what's going to happen here is each pipe is going to share half the load. So 44.5 litres per minute will go down this pipe, and 44.5 litres per minute we'll go down the other pipe. So we can see that by having this 89 litre per minute pipe, the three quarter inch pipe, we can split it in two and have 44.5 litres per minute going down these pipe. Now if the mains pipe, the pipe that came from the street was half inch pipe, meaning that it only allowed 53 litres per minute, then when we split that in two, we would have had only 26.5 litres per minute coming down each pipe, and that pressure would have been a bit low. And what plumbers can do is they can go, all right, we've got two lines of this half-inch pipe. Let's have one of these dedicated to the shower. And this way, that whoever uses that shower will have really good water pressure on that shower head. And these are the kind of problems that plumbers need to think about. Have you, have you ever been in a house that has really bad pressure in the shower? It's terrible, isn't it? And you really want to plan out your plumbing really well so that certain taps have really good pressure 
as opposed to others which maybe aren't as important. Now moving on to the diagram at left, I used some different connectors to make something that looks pretty similar to what we have on the right. We've got a three quarter inch pipe which splits in two so that you have two half inch pipes. But this scenario was done badly and we'll talk about why that is now. So remembering that our three quarter inch pipe has a flow rate of 89 litres per minute. Now as soon as we hit the half inch pipe here, it decreases to its maximum flow rate of 53 litres per minute. Okay, and then we hit this T intersection which splits it in two. And because the flow rate has already decreased to 53 litres per minute, we have to divide that number by 2. So 53 divide 2 is 26.5 litres per minute. So each of these two paths only have a flow rate of 26.5 litres per minute, which is significantly lower than the flow rates on the diagram on the right. So as you watch the next few videos, the main thing that you need to remember is that when you have pipes connected in a line like so, or connected in what's called series, that the water can only flow as fast as the weakest link okay so whichever one has the lowest flow rate that will decide the flow of the water now I do need to point out that for the examples we've been looking at they've been all about pipes and the flow of water but we're going to be looking at examples that follow the same principles but have a different scenario so one scenario that's really good is traffic Okay, and so instead of having wider pipes, you usually have more lanes on your road. And instead of the flow of water, it's the flow of traffic. How many cars can travel down a road in an hour? Now, I know the scenarios are going to be different, but the same principles will apply that we've looked at here. Anyway, that concludes our introductory video. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.